All right, so this next modification that we want to do to our kernel is actually about the visual display, the way that it is shown to you as the viewer of the screen. And that's really important because uh, what we're working on, this is called KCAL, um, also KPPD, and the two are kind of linked together, and it all comes back to this uh, this great developer, Savoka. And so I want to definitely give some huge credit to Savoka for the work that he did to implement this. This is actually really incredible stuff. Um, if you're not familiar with it, uh, this was featured on uh, XDA uh, for its advanced color control for Qualcomm devices. So essentially what it was is uh, Savoka figured out a way that you can control the color as being displayed to you as the end user. So that might sound a little confusing for a second, but I want to show you a picture, and then we'll explain in a minute. This, is, this section on the left in this picture is what the phone normally should look like. And then by using KCAL, or KPPD, you can actually adjust the settings so that the screen shows up blue. Now here's what's really crazy about this. You can change the color of the screen, but if you take a screenshot, it will still show up orange because the phone believes this is what it still looks like. You see the blue tinted image. Now, you don't have to make it blue. You can actually make it green, red, blue, whatever color you want. You can actually change all sorts of settings here. In particular, you can change brightness, contrast, and uh, and really change the um, exposure level pretty much of the of the way the image is displayed. Now, uh, this is really handy because it allows you to change the end product of how things look when you look at them. Uh, great for color adjusting in case you want to uh, be able to see something a little bit differently. Or uh, also great for maybe darkening the screen a little bit, uh, bringing out that true black, um, and uh, you know a few other uses that you might find for it. So really, really handy uh, thing to do. Um, this is actually on uh, on my website because I developed an app to control the KPPD daemon that uh, that runs this. Now it's a little bit complicated, but I want to back up to definitely explain what's happening. There's two portions. There's KCAL and KPPD. Now KCAL originally was what uh, um, Savoka made, and this changes your kernel, and that's what we're looking at. We're going to change the kernel, so then you can use um, Savoka's app to control it, how it looks. Okay, and in the end, the result will be just like this, where you can change any of the colors, the brightness, the darkness, the the essentially the essence of the color that comes out of the phone. You can adjust all of that using KCAL by adding it to the kernel itself. The problem that they found with KCAL is that some people had locked bootloaders, and so they couldn't uh, use um, KCAL uh, to adjust their colors. And so what they did is uh, Savoka made KPPD, which was a post-processing daemon that runs in the background that does the same thing. So this post-processing daemon that you install, uh, he didn't make an app to be able to control it like he made for his KCAL app. So actually, uh, I was using it, and uh, then I decided, well, it got kind of a little bit um, difficult to manually edit this text file, so I invented uh, an app to control it, and uh, the app, uh, well, this is going to take a little while for it to load here, um, we'll just jump over here, the app can be found if you just type Alaska Linux user in Google Play, you'll see some of my apps that I've made, and in there is KPPD control, so this is the app that I made to control that uh, where you can actually just move these sliders and you're going to actually physically change the screen. Now the screenshot 
no matter what you change on the slider, the screenshot is still going to look normal. But what's physically displayed to you will look different. And so this is a really neat mod to add to Qualcomm phones. A lot of Qualcomm phones support this. Uh, you, one of the things you can do is you can install KPPD Control that I made and see if your phone works with it or not. Now I get a lot of really bad reviews on here as you can see uh, 1.9 stars and a lot of 1 stars and most of them say it doesn't work and it uh, the link you know don't waste your time etc cetera, etc cetera. but uh, that's because this only works on supported Qualcomm chips. Now the list of the supported Qualcomm chips can be found where is it at? Uh, on Savoka's uh, KCAL, he has a list of all the supported chips that it works for. So if your chip's not on the list, you can try it, and if it doesn't work, I'm sorry. It's not going to work for your phone. Uh, but uh, a lot of people don't understand that, and so they just leave me bad feedback because they think that my app is supposed to work on any phone. And I'm very clear to point out that it only works uh, on you know, on phones that are supported by KCAL and KPPD. Um, and then I tell them how they can go check this list to see if they're on there or not. But uh, so that's uh, that's another story altogether. Uh, however, um, I, I do have a, uh, a thread for that. Uh, the, and it's now Oreo compatible in case you uh, uh, have an Oreo based phone and you want to give KPPD a try. That doesn't require any modification to your kernel and it just works the same as KCAL. Um, but you do have to make sure that you're either on the list or you can try it out and if it doesn't work, I'm, I'm sorry. But it's only for Qualcomm based phones. So if you have a Qualcomm based phone, it's definitely worth checking out to see if you could add a modification like this to allow the end user to make adjustments like these uh, to work. Now, um, on here as well is the KCAL um, app, which probably won't show up directly in a search here. Let's see. Actually, I think you may just have the app here yes here's the app right here that you can download and uh, install as well so he's got uh, several different versions of it um, and uh, I would probably just go with the latest one and probably be the best one for you um, and he has some uh, discussion here because there's KCAL for MDP5 and then for MDP3 and so if your phone is an MDP3 style phone it only supports red, green and blue man manipulation but if it's MDP5 you can actually change everything from the, the amount of black to the amount of white to the amount of you know vibrance and color that you can get so uh, check it out on uh, XDA. You can just jump on the XDA and, and type in KCAL, and you'll you'll end up getting to uh, Savoka's uh, wonderful um, work here. Or if you want to give it a try by trying KPPD, you can uh, you know either look me up uh, here on XDA, or you can check it out uh, in the Google Play Store. But uh, so this is what we want to try to add to our. Um, to our kernel. So rather than using the KPPD control uh, app that I've made and just installing it that way and running it on your phone, we actually want to build it into the kernel itself so they don't have to, uh, you know, uh, install anything. Uh, they will need an app, of course, to control it, but they don't have to install the daemon to make it run. So that's what we're going to work on. This one is a little bit complicated uh, as far as the scope of things, uh, 556 editions that you can see here. Um, you notice that it all takes place in drivers, video, MSM, and MDSS. So uh, that's going to be uh, pretty generic if you have a Qualcomm phone that you want to try KCAL on. Uh, drivers, video, MSM, MDSS is always where you're going to want to go. So. Um, we will uh, check that out.
All right, so let's get started. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump over to this driver's video MSM MDSS folder. So we take a look here in our kernel. We go to drivers. Drivers video MSM. Let's see, drivers, video, MSM, MDSS. All right, so first thing up on our list is the kconfig, right? So we have to give ourselves that menu option, that choice to actually do something, right? And so what we're grabbing from here is this just goes right at the end of the file to allow MDSS kcal control. So we'll copy that. And we will put it right down here at the end, paste it in. And there we go. So something to consider is you could put a default of yes or a default of no, um, something like that if you want. Uh, that's really up to you. Um, you know, I prefer to do it this way, and then we just add it to the... Uh, to our default config to say yes we want to build that so that's added and then we need to add uh, to our make file say yes if we want to build that we actually need to physically build it so we're going to copy this line same place we're going to jump into that make file so we can just open and type make file and it just goes right down here at the bottom there you go. So we save that. All right. That was all pretty easy so far. Now this file right here is a brand new file. Uh, it didn't exist before. And this is actually the file that's doing all the magic. Um, the other edits we're going to make are going to be uh, editing a few things. So what we need to do is... Uh, we can take this control C and we can view it and then save the raw file. So we'll just save that. Um, we'll go ahead and put it in the right place. So let's go to our kernel. Blue, life one X2. We're going to go to um, drivers. We're going to video. We're going to MSM, MDSS, and then we'll just save it right in there. So that's good. Uh, the next one is Control H, is also a brand new file. As you can see here, the whole thing is just green. So we're going to view that. We'll save that raw image also, same place. Save it. Notice there's no conflict because it didn't exist before. And then we have uh, this last one where we're actually going to make some edits. So there's about 119 lines of edits. It's really important to make sure you get these done right. Uh, one way that you could do that is you could uh, download the file and do a comparison. Of course, you could have just cherry-picked this commit as well. Um, but most of these are actually in solid blocks, so it's not uh, that bad just to copy it over by hand as well. Um, but, but something definitely to consider, a really easy option would have been to view, download that raw file, but not put it in your folder here, but rather put it in something like your downloads folder, save that, um, and then go ahead and uh, look at the, the file here and make the edits appropriately. So this is MDSS MDP PP. MDP PP. So SS MDP PP. And there's a C and an H, and in this case we want the C. So we just take that, open it with the diffuse, 
And then we open up the uh, other version that we have in our download folder. And we can see there are tons and tons and tons of changes in different things. So it's really difficult uh, in this case to use it that way. And also trying to merge these two files might create a lot of conflict. So in this case, it's going to be better just to copy over the blocks that we that we actually need. So it kind of depends on your needs at the time. So the first thing is in the includes. Fortunately, this is just a couple of blocks. So in the includes, we want to add our include here. So we have our includes, add our include there. I'm going to go ahead and save that every step of the way here. Now under this line, we're going to add this block. So an easy way to do this is to control find, paste that line in, and guess what? It doesn't exist. So that makes it a little more complicated. So there's changes to this file that have been made uh, in varying degrees over the years. So it may be that we actually might have a lot of difficulty implementing what we want to do. So we'll try to find this define mutex and see if it's above that somewhere. So there's our define mutex right there. and Right under that is that MDSS PP res. And when we look here, right under that is our MDSS PP res. So this is where this code needs to go. We're going to take all of that, copy it, and we're just going to put it right above that define mutex right there. We'll give a space in there just to give it a little bit of room. Uh, another thing you can do, you can always, uh, you know, put in like uh, your initials or something. That way you can find it really quickly later um, if you're uh, doing some editing like this to a file. But we're going to be able to see it in the commit that we make. Either way, this is a good uh, tool to use for yourself if you need it. Now, let's see. We'll see if we can find this line. Oops. Copy that line. Control find, paste. Can't find that line. Let's take a look again for maybe one of these other lines. Or maybe just the wording's a little bit different. So we'll try that. Nope. Alright, how about the one above it? Oops, control Z, control find, control paste. Alright, so we have that loot right there. Static void loot. Um, and above it we have that MDP add setup. MDP add setup right there. So this looks like the right place to put this in. And what we want is we want to copy this line. And we're going to put it right in there. So we'll save that. And then we have uh, this rather large section of code right here, which is the last section that we need. And it goes right above this line. So we'll control find, see if we can find that in there. And sure enough, we did. Of course, that uh, opens up with int i ret 0. So integer of i returns 0. And we see here integer of i returns 0. So this is the right spot for it. So we'll just go ahead and grab this code, copy that, paste it right in there, and give that a try. Oh, no, I messed that up. There we go. I still had that highlighted. So let's try... Int i... There we go. I was deleting this line. I didn't want to do that. Okay, so now we've made our change to our file here. And let's uh, see if we can get this to uh, compile. See if we run into some errors and see what we can do to uh, make this work.
Oh, one thing we forgot. One thing we forgot. I went ahead and canceled this because this is fairly important. One of the things we did is we added the option to build it, right? We said, hey, if you want to build it, you know, you can. But uh, we didn't actually edit our default config to actually build it. So let's go over to our architecture, our ARM64, our configs, and open up our config right there. So what we can do, where to put this in our config, I would just copy the one right above it, find that, there it is, set to a Y. We're going to copy that line, paste it in right there, and we are going to now edit that line to say this instead. So we copy this, paste it right there. Otherwise, we won't actually be building anything. We'll just be have it there, but we're not going to actually build it. So let's give that another try and uh, see what we get.